Well, hello! How are you today, my friends? I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend of August 25th. Now, you're probably familiar with what we do on this show. We focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, when I do my research looking for hot penny stocks, I primarily do it by looking at the charts first. In my opinion, the news is more dependent on a chart than vice versa. I have seen a lot of big news fall flat on its face because of a cold chart. So I'm looking for charts that have heat. I'm looking for charts that have a lot of volume coming in or maybe a breakout setup like an atypical breakout or a lot of bounces back to back. Something that says this chart is ready to run. When I find a chart like that, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When I find one, then I know I've got a hot penny stock. Well, believe it or not, we're not doing that today. The stocks we're looking at are not based on their charts. However, they all have one thing in common. They're in the AI sector, which is the hottest sector probably ever in the stock market. It is growing at an incredible rate right now. Unless you've been under a rock, you've probably noticed for the last two to three quarters, AI has been exploding. Here in our last financials, over a thousand companies have mentioned AI compared to just a few years ago when there was less than a hundred. We have lots of news around AI. It is changing the world and it's growing very, very quickly. The companies that are using it are growing fast. The companies that aren't, well, they better get on board quick or they're probably going to fall by the wayside like Kmart and Walmart did. So I've got three pieces of news here just to put you in the mindset of what AI is doing in the world, starting from an investor's point of view. Did you know that Warren Buffett has 47% of his $375 billion portfolio invested in three artificial intelligence companies? Now, I don't know for a fact which ones they are, but if I was to take a wild guess, I'd probably say Microsoft, IBM, and NVIDIA. Just my guesses. Here's a piece of news that I'm sure Hollywood was not aware of. They thought this was going to be a bargain for them. AI created art is not copyrightable. Judge says in ruling that could give Hollywood studios pause. The judge stressed that copyright law was only designed to protect works of human creation. So an AI could make a piece of artwork like a poster, or it could write a book, or it could be doing scenes in movies, even deep fakes, meaning you are using fake people. They look real, they look like the actor, they sound like the actor, but that's not an actor. That's an AI-generated image. Well, Hollywood won't be able to copyright them. Authors won't be able to copyright their books that AI did. You can't even copyright the poster. Anything made by AI is not copyrightable. That is a huge piece of news. And another piece of news I found very interesting was schools were banning chat GPT for fear that the kids would be cheating. Well, that's what we all think. But turn the coin over. Think of how much good information they could get from chat GPT. Now, I'm not saying artificial intelligence is perfect. We know it's not. But it's more right than wrong. More so than the internet is. So, AI is changing the world in a lot of ways. And the truth of the matter is, is if businesses don't get on board right now, they could end up falling to the wayside and we may never see them again. Well, today we're going to look at stocks that are heavily involved with AI. Stocks you may want to consider that all have catalysts. The charts are going to be what the charts are going to be. Now, you're probably aware of the fact there's a lot of AI companies out there, but most of them are using AI. But there are quite a lot of them that are creating AI products for companies and people to use. Now, of course, I can't cover them all, but I do have a handful of them here I want to share with you. First ticker we're taking a look at is LZGI. This is LZG International Inc., but they're actually doing business under the name of Fatbrain AI. And with a name like Fatbrain, you better be good. So Fatbrain finished the day at about 41 and a half cents, that is to say on Friday, and she fell just about four and a half percent. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. The QB, we call this the better tier. It's better because you have to audit your financials to be on the QB. And you have to have a minimum bid price of one cent. 
They also have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. More validated information, so everything looks good here. Plus, we got a bonus. They are penny stock exempt. This tells us they are not risky like a startup company. The way they prove that, they've been in business for three to five years, had millions of dollars of assets or revenues during that time period, and have kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven to us that they are reliable. So looking at the description of the company, they tell us here that FatBrain AI is the first and leading provider of powerful and easy to use AI solutions to millions of businesses of tomorrow. FatBrain's innovative solutions transform continuous learning, narrative reasoning, cloud, blockchain, and Web3 technologies into auditable, explainable, and easy to integrate products. FatBrain's subscription model allows all companies to deploy its advanced AI solutions quickly and easily and securely, utilizing them on the company's own premises, behind their own firewalls, using their own cloud. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, she dropped almost 50%, going from a very low 154,000 shares a day for the last 30 days to just about 84,000 shares. Share structure for LZGI, presuming these numbers are right, our outstanding share count is at about 167 million. The restricted shares, these are the shares the management, hedge funds, institutions own. That's 136 million. That is definitely the lion's share. That leaves about 30 million shares for the float for us. Not a bad float. Not going to call it a low float, but 30 million isn't bad. Financials for LZGI. Well, it looks like they finally got some revenues on the books at the end of their fiscal year, May of 2022. They did $216,000. We got three zeros up here. We got to throw behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. Jumping down to the quarterly. Oh my God, what an increase. She exploded in revenues. Here is May 2022. She did $129,000 that three months. Over the next three months, she jumped to $2.4 million. Next quarter, she's at $6.9 million. And at the end of February 2023, she hit $9.5 million. Now, we just had another financial come out for May, which is the end of their fiscal year. They tell us that Fat Brain AI completes fiscal year with revenue of approximately $44 million, up 20,000% from last year. The revenues for the three months ended May of 2023 was about $24.5 million, up about 155% compared to $9.5 million in the last quarter, but really up big compared to last year when she was only at $129,000. Now, they do tell us that the full year revenues are about $44 million compared to $216,000 last year. For the full year, they are up over 20,000%. They tell us here that they have identified a large number of potential customers and accredited acquisitions. The company began signing customers on a rapid rate. We've created new plans to commercialize. We've created and released products for SMEs to protect, predict, and increase cash flows. We've also continued innovating through the soon-to-be-launched Fat GPT, And our revenue ramp and order flow make us very optimistic about the future. I'm optimistic as well. Taking a look at those disclosures. What do we got here? We've got our 10 Qs. They came out in June. That is the most recent information we got. And as I always say, if you really want to know about the company, don't go running around Google, going from site to site. Don't even bother with all the news presses, though that's a lot of information too. It's just easier to go into a 10K or a 10Q. They have all the information, all the deals, the entire history of the company from the day they started. The best place to do your research. So let's take a look at that news now. So we have got lots of news here, and we're not going to go through all of it, but I want to headline most of it. We have gone back here to May of this year. Fat Brain achieves fifth consecutive record revenue quarter. 
Next one says they signed multiple strategic distribution agreements. They also signed several new customers for artificial intelligence suite of products. Uh, here in July, the company files for several patents covering its artificial intelligence suite of products. You need those patents, especially now with the way AI is growing, everybody is patenting something. You better get there first. Uh, this is also in July, halfway through. Lynchfield Hills Research initiates Fat Brain AI with a buy rating and a price target of $5. And we are at 41 cents. We just got done reading this one, which came out on the 20th with their revenues of $44 million, up 20,000%. Then on July 26, Fat Brain launches powerful AI solution for thousands of independent agents writing over $450 billion in U.S. and PNC premiums. They're writing insurance policies, and this is helping all of those businesses. And the last piece of news that came out, Fat Brain AI and Appulate to distribute AI sales enablement solutions to 35,000 agencies serving 150 insurance carriers. As you can see by the last two pieces of news, they're getting their products out there in a very big way. So if you thought their revenues were already exploding, I think we are just beginning to see the explosion. Let's go take a look at this chart. Let's do some charting for these AI stocks now. We're going to be doing all of it on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And that was free too. Now, I have not vetted any of these AI stocks. Normally, we're looking at hot charts ready to run. These are whatever they are. We're more interested in the hot sector because the whole sector is lifting up right now. So, we are looking at Fat Brain AI, ticker LZGI. We got a high bubble at the end of January this year of $2.55, just up underneath our new 200-day SMA. From the end of January to the beginning of April, she fell from $2.55 down to $0.10. Cents. Off of this low bubble in April, she started to climb ever so slowly and steadily towards that 200. And in July, July 20th, when that news came out about their 44 million revenues, up 20,000% from last year, she took a jump. She went from 89 cents up to a buck 51. Lots of volume came in for a few days here. And she stayed above that 200 for about 10 days. Then she had a big crash, I'm not quite sure why, and she came down here to this mid-30s area. She's at like 35, 36. Now you can see right here, we do have a strong support. I'm going to draw a line right there. You can see a whole bunch of this is sitting on top of it, including our price right now. We've got another resistance up here, right there. We're going to draw one in that area. That one's at 62 cents. The other one is at 39 cents roughly. And as you can see, she is bouncing in that region. Lots of volume since the news came out, but it has been dwindling away as the price has. And she's been bouncing and sitting on this strong support right now. Now there's actually a new support in here, a resistance actually, right there at about 54 cents. She's just created that one. So she's got to get up over everything here. She's got to get on top of this 50 up here. The problem right now, folks, are all these SMAs. Our 200, our 200 haul, our 50 day, they're all pushing down right now. So there's a lot of down pressure. And looking at our oscillators, our PPO is pushing down. Our RSI is clear down at 41. And our MACD looks like she's just about ready to cross over right now. So I would look for the bounce off of here, but she could easily go under it. We are watching it right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Big drop. 20 days ago, we were at $1.27. She came down to that strong support, and she hit $0.35 cents right here. Bounced up off of it, got up over a 50-day SMA, and she has come back down to that support. Here comes our 200-day haul up underneath, pushing up. That should give it some support and strength to help lift it. Our oscillators. Well, our PPO has just the slightest hint of starting to come up, but not much. Our MACD, it's the same thing, just the slightest of hint. She's already underneath, but she's just now starting to turn, like our RSI, just like that. Just a little bit of push-up. 
looking at our five day, five minute. So she was up here at that strong resistance we drew just around 60 cents, came down to that low of 35 cents, bounced off of it. Now again, all of our SMAs look horrible. They are all pushing down. But you can see she was riding across the bottom right there very firmly. And now she's bounced up and she's on top of her nine. It is a light at the end of the tunnel. This could start to break through here, but she's going to need a lot of strength. She's going to need some volume and some excitement. Our osculators, again, they are all just now starting recovery. The PPO, the MACD, they're all just starting to push up right now, just like our RSI, jumping from 43 up to 47. Just now showing signs of starting to climb. We're in the watch zone for sure. This might be a good buy zone to start. Pick up 20, 25% of what you want. If she comes down lower, you won't be too upset because now you can buy more at a better price. But she looks like she has a little bit of inkling of climbing, but she's done this before. And as I said, all of these SMAs are powerful and strong and they are pushing down on her. So I would not be surprised to see her come down further. Now, just out of curiosity, I want to go back one year. So our absolute low here is 10 cents right there. I don't think she'll come down that low, but it is possible. We are at 40 cents. That would be a huge drop if she came down that far. But honestly, with the revenues they're making, with all that new business that they just brought in, you know more revenues are going to be coming in. So I don't think if she dips, she's going to dip far. And I do think she's going to grow. LZGI, it's one you seriously need to be considering. Our next artificial intelligence company comes from the major exchange. This is VSIG, ticker VCIG, company name VCI Global Limited. Now we need to look at VSIG in a hurry before she leaves. Boop, boop, all aboard, leaving Pennyville. <laughs> she is at $4.69 right now. Penny stocks or any stock under five bucks. Well, she's been over five bucks quite a few times in the last six months. She has broke out three times, just had a breakout here recently, fell back down, and she is sitting right on top of the 200 right now. And she's got a lot of hot news. So VSIG finished today on Friday at that $4.69 with over 14% loss. She's on the NASDAQ. That means she's free to trade. You can trade her pre-market, after-market. Bottom line, you can have a lot more fun trading major exchange penny stocks than you can the ones on the OTC. Just my opinion. Looking at the business description for the company, VCI Global Limited provides consulting services in Malaysia, China, Singapore, and the United States. It offers business strategy consultancy, including software solutions that comprise artificial intelligence, analytics, and robotics, as well as a range of blockchain technology solutions. It delivers its services to small, medium enterprises and government-linked agencies, as well as to publicly traded conglomerates across various sectors. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Holy cow! She lost more than two-thirds of her regular volume, dropping from 2.6 million down to 871,000. Share structure for VCIG, well, they don't give us a lot of information here. All we see are the outstanding shares, about 37 million. Now, as I tell you over and over again, the float can't be more than the outstanding share count, so it won't be over 37 million, and it could be considerably less. Looking at V6 financials, wow, they had a big jump from 2020 to 2021, going from just under a million dollars to just over $11 million. And then here in 2022, they did take a dip down to about $8 million, but they got to keep the lion's share of that, $6.3 million. Looking at our quarterly, we're not going to see anything here because it's a foreign company. Foreign companies do not file disclosures, 10Ks, 10Qs. What they file are 20Fs. 20Fs are for foreign companies. They do not file quarterly reports, only annual. So you're going to find a ton of information in there. Then we've got a 6K here that did not come out too long ago, July 19th. This is another one of the deals that they have made here in the last few months. 
The company announced that they will be collaborating with Treasure Global, ticker TGL, on the NASDAQ. Together, they will be developing an artificial intelligent-powered travel platform to heighten traveling experiences for travelers in Malaysia. And business over there is exploding again. Post-COVID, at the end of 2022, they had 4.5 million tourists. At the end of 2021, they only had 61,000. So business is up and running again. Taking a look at the company's news. Now, what I found strange here, we just read about that deal they did with TGL. Well, that was on July 19th. Well, there is no news here on July 19th. There is no news press here about that deal at all. So we would not have known about that deal unless we had gone through the disclosures. Now, they've got other deals over here, all since June. Here, June 16th, the company debuts into the artificial intelligence and big data industries through a partnership with Fusion X. And I don't know anything about it, folks. I'm headlining this for you. I'm going to leave the due diligence up to you. They made another deal June 26th to acquire 51% stake in the AI-based company Kajia. They got another deal here August 21st. They appointed AdScale exclusive licensee for their AI-powered marketing tools. Now, one piece of news here I do want to dive into is right here. It came out August 23rd, and this is big news. VCI Global Limited announces visionary collaboration with Microsoft Azure OpenAI. Now, there are lots of companies these little OTC and penny stock companies could be aligning with. NVIDIA, IBM, Microsoft, and if they do, that tells me that they're worth something. These huge companies would not align themselves with little companies that have no value. So they tell us here that the company has teamed up with Microsoft Azure OpenAI platform. This partnership acknowledges the screaming demand and dedication to transform the dynamic tech landscape as businesses move towards borderless and seamless frontiers at neck-breaking speeds to efficiently engage their customers. And really, that's what it's about, getting on the ball. You know, when the internet came out, and it did change businesses big time, well, companies had years and years to develop their online sites and get online. You're not going to be able to take that much leisure with AI. It's moving too quick. So if people don't get on the ball here soon, they could find themselves out of the game. Tapping into Microsoft Azure OpenAI's potentials, the company's playing its part in developing the tech landscape by navigating a transformative path and provide game-changing solutions in creating next-gen innovations and being at the forefront while making inroads using tools like, and they're involved with all of these, GPT-4, Microsoft Azure, Bing Chat Enterprise. So they're making use of all of those AI programs with their business. The company is also able to capitalize on Microsoft Azure's OpenAI's cutting-edge AI technology for its current and new projects, which include the RoboSales software, which is an all-in-one, fully automated AI-assisted sales platform. So this company is right near $5 right now. They're about ready to leave Pennyville. They've had three nice jumps on the charts, which have already put them outside of being a penny stock. And I think they're going to get another one. Let's take a look at that chart. We are now looking at ticker VCIG. Of course, it's a six-month, four-hour view. As you can see, she has had three nice rips, the biggest one back here on May 2nd, hitting a high of $24, bouncing off of $2.30. Folks, that is over a 1,000% run. Now, just to make sure these are real numbers, I checked to see if there was any reverse split since that high bubble. There weren't, so we can trust all these numbers. So she came down off of that $24 very quick underneath the 50-day SMA for quite a while until June 20th when she had another rip. She jumped here from uh, 270 up to 1130. You're looking at roughly 400% gains there. This time she took her time falling. She did come underneath the 200, sat there for a while, and it was on August 11th she jumped up made a break for it, came back down to a 50, bounced again, only fell to a 20 this time, and then took that launch 
from $3.80 up to $9.40, just about 250% gains. And since then, she has been falling for the last couple of days. Now, she is still over her 200, and we've got our 50-day SMA just about ready to cross the 200. That's going to give us a golden cross, one of the strongest technicals on the charts. So we could expect a jump on the price here. Our oscillators are looking very weak. Our PPO is falling down. Our MACD is at a crossover. It too is coming down. Lots of red bars accumulating. And our RSI is clear down at 48 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she's been under that 200 for about 10 days here. Hit a low of $2.66. Got up on top of the 200. Bounced off the 200 once, came up high, came down, hit the 50, and bounced off of that, getting our supreme high of $9.35. And for the last two days, she has been falling. She is underneath all of her strong SMAs, but she is on top of her 200. And we've got one lonely green bar there after market hours. Our oscillators are still falling. However, they're falling slower now. They were coming down and they just started to turn up just a little bit. Our five day, five minute. So here's our low of $3.70 underneath the 200. Had a nice rip pre market, fell down to the 20. Bounced after the bell, fell down to the 50. Took another bounce up to that high of $9.35, and that was it. Game over. She fell the rest of the day, even after market hitting a low here of $5.85 on the 200. I thought she would have bounced off of this. She got up over top of the 50, looked like she was ready to go again, but she went through the 200 and she's been on a downtrend ever since then. Now, right now, it looks like she's thinking about coming over top of that 50-day SMA, which she needs to do to start pushing towards that 200. Our oscillators actually show some hope here. Would you believe that? Our PPO, the blue line is going up. My ADX trend continuation is going down. Trend continuation, this tells me what my trend is doing. As long as I have a line going the same direction, whatever the trend is, right now it's going up, right? It started falling right here. As long as it's a straight line, doesn't matter if this is falling, going up, or even sideways, just a straight line. Whatever the trend is, as long as that line doesn't change, it means that trend is continuing. So when I see my blue line going up, my PPO and my ADX going down and they're getting further and further apart, guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. So that is looking promising. Oh, our MACD has finally got on top, but she is going sideways right now and our RSI is falling. So again, we've got a stock here that's made a lot of deals. Their revenues aren't bad, but I expect them to get better. And the chart is on the low side right now. Time to watch it. Time to consider buying in. And any of these stocks you buy into, folks, if you're going to be hanging on to them for a while, only buy some of what you want right now. Because if it falls, you're not going to want to feel like you just are losing money. You want to feel like you have an opportunity and that's what you do when you buy some now and some later. You can average down with a better price. So VCIG, another one to put on your watch list. We got another AI company from the NASDAQ. This is Exela Technologies, ticker XELA. Now her chart isn't all that bad. It was an atypical breakout chart that's already broke out and came back down. It's underneath the 200, preparing, it looks to me, like another atypical breakout. At least that's what the technicals say. And she's got hot news. She, too, has just made a deal here recently with Microsoft. So, Exela finished today on Friday at $4.12 with just about a half percent gains. She tells us, that the company has decades of experience operating mission-critical processes. Excellus serves a growing roster of more than 4,000 customers throughout 50 countries, including over 60% of the Fortune 100 companies. Wow! With foundational technology spanning information management, workflow animation, and integrated communications. Exela is a leader in workflow automation, unattended and attended cognitive automation, digital mailrooms, 
print communications and payment processing with deployments across the globe. Through cloud-enabled platforms built on configurable stack of automation modules and over 16,500 employees operating in 21 countries, Exela rapidly deploys integrated technology and operations as an end-to-end -end digital journey partner. Sounds good to me. What was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, come on. That's more than 50% loss of our normal volume, dropping from 366,000 shares down to 118,000. Woo. Share structure for Exilla. Hey, we got a low float. Don't have a clue what it is, but our outstanding share count is only 6.3 million. Can't have a float higher than the outstanding share count. Financials for Exela. Whoa, now those are revenues. Remember, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts, which means at the end of 2022, this company did just a little over $1 billion worth of revenues. However, it cost them $877 million to get $200 million. Now, I'm a little confused by that because personally, I think of artificial intelligence as being a digital product, something you don't have to manufacture, package. You know, it doesn't cost anything to move information online. So why is that so high? Maybe they need to get the artificial intelligence to help whittle that down. Quarterly reports. Like clockwork, their revenues, they're doing about a quarter billion dollars every three months. Taking a look at those disclosures. Our most recent disclosures here on August 10th and August 14th both have to do with financials. They're late. They were supposed to have them out already. They filed an NT10Q on the 10th of August, which reads, we are not filing our quarterly report on time. This buys them five more days. So they filed this on the 10th. They should have had it out by the 15th. Well, the fact of the matter is they didn't. We didn't see them. And that's what this 8K is about. They have been contacted by NASDAQ. On August 11th, the company received a notice of non-compliance from NASDAQ, notifying them that as a result of the company's failure to timely file its quarterly report on the Form 10-Q, they could be facing a delisting. So they have submitted a plan, but the plan has not yet been approved. They tell us here, if the plan is accepted by NASDAQ, the company can be granted six months from the day that the 10-Q was due, or up until February 5th. So they need to get that filing out as soon as possible, but they do have up until February 5th. Why it isn't out, I really don't know. Let's take a look now at the news. So we're looking at news going back here to June 9th, and we've got a few pieces of news here, and I actually want to poke my head into all of them, but I want to show you here that there was a change of operations, if you will. On June 9th, Exela Technology closes sale of high-speed scanner business as part of strategic plan to sell non-core assets. Well, then uh, about 11 days later, they came out with the company announces generative AI initiatives. So they're selling off the old business and bringing in new business. Now we've got three headlines here I want to touch on to. One came out July 18th. The company announced today that they have signed several additional U.S. counties for its digital mailroom solution, continuing to increase its market share of the public sector customer space, contributing to their generated $765 million revenues in 2022. So that's the sort of money they're making with this digital mailroom. Lots of business coming in. Then on the 25th, the company announces that they have obtained the highest level of certification from BSI, Germany's Federal Office for Information Security and TR ResScan. This is a substantial achievement for Exela, as the BSI is the highest level of recognition in Germany, a market with very demanding data protection laws. And the last piece of news came out August 10th. The company today announced its collaboration with Microsoft to help Exela's customers leverage generative AI technologies on Microsoft's Azure. The collaboration with Microsoft will initially focus on India, 
They will further strengthen Excel's previously announced AI initiatives by powering Excel's low-code platforms with a set of new generative AI capabilities. Excel's customers can expect to drive personalized engagement, optimized workflow automation, and industry-leading AI decision capabilities. Now, this low-code platform this is really, really important, folks. A lot of companies aren't able to use AI because they don't have the base to work with and they need something. Well, most of it's way too complicated. So they have in invented low-code, no-code platforms that these AI platforms can plug into so now anybody can use AI. Excella will use generative AI to further enhance customer service for software products like DrySign. Digital Mailroom, XBP, which is Exchange for Bills and Payments, and PCH, the award-winning Healthcare Claims Processing Gateway. So they've got a lot of artificial intelligent programs to help businesses with their workflow, take care of all that hard stuff. And I know that is going to be popular. You see what sort of money they're already making, and things are picking up, as all the AI companies are. The charts are low, but business is picking up. And when business picks up, revenues grow. And that's when the prices on the chart start to take off. Let's go take a look at the chart for Exela. We're now checking out ticker XELA, Exela Technologies. This is a one-year, one-day chart. I wanted to show you how the charts can get really messed up with reverse splits. We had a reverse split for this company on May 15th of this year. It was a 1 in 200. We had a high bubble back here August 30th. They tell us that high is $218. No way. Never happened. Not even close. What they did is they took the high of that day and they multiplied it times 200. So it was just barely over a dollar. So the numbers behind the reverse split, you cannot trust. The chart's still right, but you can't trust the numbers. Everything after it is going to be accurate. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. Here's our reverse split right here. Here's our high. Not true. $36. We wish. What is true is she's been on a serious downtrend all of this time. She has broke through the 200 three times, but you can see she was steep. So she just get up there and slip and fall, slip and fall, slip and fall. Now here is our low right here. We aren't anywhere near that low right now. We are playing around the 200. She had a breakout here, came down underneath it. There was a nice breakout and then she toppled and she fell. And now she is going sideways breaking through her 20. Things are starting to look better here, and you see our pattern on our oscillators. We have our ADX going down and our PPO going up. As long as they're spreading, the price is climbing. Our MACD is climbing, approaching the signal line, and we have green bars accumulating, and our RSI is now climbing as well. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Big downtrend from $6.59 all the way down to $3.82, hanging around this 200-day haul. This is what she's bounced off of, got up on top of her 50. She's wrestling with that right now, and now she's put herself on top of the 20. It's all looking nice, graduating little by little, and she is pushing up. Our oscillators, PPO is pushing up right now, just had a crossover. ADX is still going down. Our MACD is crossing the signal line and had a crossover itself. Lots of power building up here, folks. And we've had two days of the RSI bouncing uphill, starting down here at 36 and is currently at 58. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. Wow. Lots of volatility from $4.30 down to $3.82, back to $4.31, down to $3.90. Shh, it's becoming a wedge here. It's all squeezing in. And she is right on top of her 200-day SMA right now with some big bars. She's done this before and she ends up falling. But now our 200 is climbing. All of this, it was flat. It was starting to climb here, but it is actually getting steeper. Things are looking better. Oscillators look much better. Our PPO is growing up at a nice incline. Our MACD is bouncing right now. But then we did have a big bar right there. And our RSI just took a nice leap. 
I think Excel is worth watching. She's making a lot of money. She's now involved with Microsoft, has got lots of other companies they're doing business with, actually have more employees, 16,500, than they do customers, over 4,000. What a big company. So they're serious about what they do, and AI is only getting bigger. How big do you think Excel could get? Lots of AI companies out there, folks, and I wish we could have talked about more. I actually looked at more. I had six of them all lined up that we could have talked about. We looked at three. Now, if you're interested, I will give you the tickers and the headline of why I was considering these other AI companies, but there's a lot more than just these. One of them was Citus Space, ticker S-I-D-U. This company is launching satellites and they are putting edge artificial intelligence on their Lizzie satellite program. Another one of the companies we could have talked about is Toggle 3D AI. This is ticker TGGLF. They have this artificial intelligence that uses pictures to create texture in 3D. I don't know a lot about it, but it sounds quite interesting to me. And the last one we could have talked about is GBT Technologies. This is ticker GTCH. Now, they've got a whole lot of IP, and they like to license it out and sell it. And they just made a deal with two companies that are merging. It's a SPAC and another company called Banix. And they are creating these autonomous vehicles. And this company, GTCH, has got a radio frequency LIDAR so it can see. And it is being used with artificial intelligence. So there you got three more on top of the three we looked at. Lots of due diligence for you. Remember, folks, the more you know, hmm, the more you're going to grow. See ya.